this presentation, we have chosen to look at refugees and how they are affected by poverty in Australia. We've chosen this population group as they are at a high risk of poverty in our society. From facing language barriers, employment difficulty, education barriers, as well as racism and discrimination. These are only some of the factors that impact their resettlement process. And the following presentation is going to depict and outline just how this group is at risk of poverty within Australia. The Australian Department of Immigration and Border Protection works hand in hand with the UNHCR when it comes to refugees and the organising of visas and settlement details. It is estimated that in 2012, there were 15.4 million people seeking refugee status worldwide. This is the largest number they have seen since 1994. In the time between 2012 and 2013, Australia granted a total number of 12,515 offshore visas. 2012 of these were seeking refugee status, with the highest number of seeking refugee status coming from Iraq, Afghanistan, Myanmar and Burma. The UNHCR, otherwise known as the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, classifies refugees as people who have left their home country in order to escape war, persecution or natural disaster and are in need of resettlement. Refugees are those who have to move away from their previous country of origin in order to save their lives or preserve their freedom. They require protection from their own government or state. This separates them from those such as migrants who choose to move in order to further improve them and their families' prospects. Refugees are often given the opportunity to return home, return home voluntarily or find safe refuge in another state. Refugees are seeking asylum as a necessity, not out of personal gain. It is commonplace for those who are denied help and entry into other countries to be forced into life without rights, without food and with no prospects of things improving. The chance of death is very high for those who are, not, who are turned away. Second time, will the third be wasted life? Should we try again and smile again? Hold our breath up and pray. Should we leap in faith or stand? poverty is one that drastically differs from the socialism way of community and equality. Conservationists see inequality as a natural part of society, something that is determined by the market and should have limited government assistance. This may explain why many of the recommendations made by the ASRC, Asylum Seeker Resource Centre, are not being put into place by the government. Inequality is something that should be dealt with on an individual basis. It is not something that should be dealt with structurally. Structural fixes risk the participants becoming dependent on the government and in turn taking away their freedom and independence. This is reflected on 
by the lack of government specific funding or grants available for asylum seekers or refugees. However, once the asylum seekers reach refugee status, they are eligible for most basic government assisted payments. This also means equal opportunity to work and to get an education. However, previous training is sometimes not recognised, so more training must be undertaken. This can be difficult because of issues such as finance and language barriers. The conservationist view is that poverty is a failure of an individual and the government will only assist those who are most vulnerable. Although refugees have access to Medicare, affordable medication is still not readily available for them. Refugees face many obstacles before settling in Australia, such as fear, persecution, war, torture, trauma, loss and grief. The resettlement experience alone also has challenges, the language barrier being a big one of these, but also hopelessness, loneliness, isolation, anxiety, despair, and threat of return. Also consider areas such as education and housing. If the government uh, funded pathways into vocational education services, uh, funding for traineeships and work experience programs, and specialist employment services targeted at refugees, this would assist in the challenges that they face when arriving. Also housing, um, you know, being a basic need uh, to fully educate our housing organisations to understand the options on offer. Um, definitely an increase of funding into this area. I think one of the most important considerations that we need to be aware of in setting up new structures and uh, systems for healthcare, housing, education and other basic needs for refugees that are settling in Australia. Um, and this is a quote from the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre paper and it states that Australia has moral and legal obligation to asylum seekers and should recognise the positive contributions that they can make to our society. Instead, community-based asylum seekers are faced with destitution and uncertainty. Australia and refugees is not a new thing. Um, so instead, we should be considering structures and systems that worked well in the past that have uh, a positive impact and look at trying to implement them in the future. Centrelink offer many different payments and benefits for individual circumstances. Once an asylum seeker becomes a permanent refugee, they are entitled to any payment like any Australian applying for welfare. Because there is no particular payment set out for refugees, we'll look at a payment that is available for asylum seekers. This payment is the Asylum Seeker Assistance Scheme. This payment is funded by the Immigration Department and administered through Red Cross. Most asylum seekers have a number of requirements to meet before being able to access an Asylum Seeker Assistance Scheme. The eligibility criteria is restrictive and narrow, which will force people into crisis and destitution. A requirement before accessing this payment is they must have been waiting for a protection visa decision for at least six months. Prior to this, they aren't granted any money at all and seek everything through charity. The maximum amount per week is set at 89% of the Centrelink special benefit, the total amount being $227 per week. This only covers basic needs. The intention, intention of this payment is to provide a safety net. It aims to support the most vulnerable asylum seekers and is to help those who become permanent residents in Australia to effectively contribute and participate in the community. Those with children, the income aims to ensure the safety and well-being of them. The lack of income support, including this payment, still forces many into a life of poverty and dependency. 
There are so many gaps that exist with appropriate care to asylum seekers. This payment doesn't help alleviate poverty at all for this particular group. In many ways, these asylum seekers and refugees suffer from many forms of deprivation. This including access to health, housing, employment and education. They face so much uncertainty and with a lack of funded resources, this adds further harm on what is probably the most vulnerable people in our community. As stated by the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre, the current refugee determination process does not support the interest and desire for asylum seekers' resilience and determination to improve their quality of life. So it's important to consider, does their socio-economical status and risk of being at poverty ever truly change with the amount of discrimination and racism they face? Can money really alleviate their situation? Or are there too many underlying factors to consider as obstacles? like the cycle of poverty, mindsets and cultural ties that are not easily broken, cultural ties that can impact and influence their level and risk of being at poverty in our country. This is a day filled with sadness and pain Sorrow and shame Like I've never known Why can't I get it right On the first, the second time Will the third be wasted life Should we try again and smile again Hold our breath up and pray Should we leap in faith Or stand in faith Hold our breath up and pray When try again